Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here in TNO, the last days of Europe, in which we are playing as America, led by a certain Kennedy, not the one that got killed in a car yet, but, well, yet, uh, RFK, Inauguration Day. Now, I know I've played as Kennedy before, but we're going down a different route this time with him. The American people have spoken, and they want justice over nepotism and peace over chaos. By the powers granted to me by our holy constitution, I promise to legislate and implement an act that will unite America. No longer shall we be divided between black and white, man and woman. The America tomorrow will be one, where each and every one of us will have to do our parts to bring our great nation into the future. God bless America. Robert F. Kennedy's speech was testament to his late brother's legacy and his final project, implementing a law to stop segregation and uh, de de dedicated his term to that cause. The question remains, will he be able to do it? Tensions in America is larger than in a long time, and his presidency is predicated on the cooperation with a <clears throat> certain right faction, ardent segregationists, and not known for playing nice. Good luck, Kennedy. You're going to need it. Hail to the chief. I don't remember seeing this one last time. Yeah, that's actually really cool. Really cool. And we're doing the presidency, Kennedy presidency. Election day is coming past, and RFK is now the 36th president of the U.S. The heir, the new heir, to one of America's greatest families has blazed a cross-country campaign trail, promising to deliver equality for all Americans. To the worker, he promised better wages and better workplaces. To the old and infirm, he promised pensions for the hard work. To the sickly, he promised health care, robust and cheap. To the homeless, he promised homes of their own. To the colored man, he promised the rights that they had been withheld for decades, and now they can live freely and securely in the land of their birth, though they had been subject to both doubt and ridicule from both his opponents and his own party, and the results speak for themselves. President Kennedy has his work cut out for him in the months ahead. Cracks are starting to show on the NPP's United Front and the Republican Democrats from the count county to state have already pledged to Stonewall's legislation, but America's downtrodden now look to him for deliverance. As they once did to his brother, if Jack never quit even in his final seconds, then neither will Bobby, but we gotta figure it all out. Now, I'll be honest, I've read through these focuses before, but I wanna read them again because it's been a while since I've done RFK and I do wanna do a different direction with him. My fellow Americans, I will be frank, the past four years have wrecked a terrible toll upon the U.S. and her institutions. Fear for the future runs rapid, and yet distrust for those oath sworn to lead this nation through it grows with each scandal, but we must give in to our lesser nature and believe that nothing can right America's path before the point of no return? I think not. America and her people are no strangers to crisis. The darkest of times are where character and strength shine brightest, and Americans have showcased great fortitude and unity in every war and depression that assailed us for the past 200 years. We've been dealt bloody many times in the past, but we eventually recovered, and from each we emerged stronger than before. My fellow Americans, I ask only one thing from you and one thing only, to believe. Believe in the fortitude that resides in your hearts. Believe in the goodwill that guides our thoughts and actions. Believe that this great country will survive the present crisis, just as it had survived worse in the past. Believe that the present will pass, and together we will find our ways back towards a future every American, no matter the race, class, or creed, can look forward to. Cool. Also, here's the election results. From the most recent election, we got rid of Nixon, obviously. We had 20 Republicans, 25 Democrats, 35 Senator MPP, which is pretty good. Obviously, we'd like more. We liked 50, but whatever. And 18 far-right MPP senators, which is not too bad. Ooh. And we have light discontent. And as you see here in Africa, like, my main goal down here right now has literally just been just destroying as many enemy divisions as possible. Um, oh, and what I should let you definitely know, who won in Germany for the Civil War? Also, we already finished up all the technology for the CIA stuff. It's just... The CIA thing is just okay. By 65, we're done with it, which, you know, eh, it's okay. So, eh, whatever. And the, the fat man won in here, so we are, oh, you never know. They did send volunteers down here. We already killed off a few divisions, so we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Ah, oh, you're like, ah, oh, very good. But I did want to catch you up to speed. Here we go, 4.2% growth, 18 billion in depth. And we've already finished off making all the civvies we possibly can for now. We're gonna go straight for Quillamane though. If we can capitulate um the dude over here, that'd be really good. Hutig, yeah. His name is Hutig. Ah, uh, the Battle of Salisbury, going about that place, great head, and yet the war goes on. The new president, New America, RFK, has spent years devoted to his work, allowing himself a few pleasures. So he thought it was only fair that after being inaugurated as president of the U.S., he allowed himself a night of overindulgence with a bottle of Malbec and his beautiful wife. Unfortunately, the pleasures of yesterday pale in the light of dawn, hungover, stomach lurching, the new president plastered a smile onto his face as he mounted the podium in the White House press to give his first speech to the nation. My fellow Americans, it is with great pride that I come before you today as your president. To put your trust in me as you did my father and my brother before me it does a great honor. He stifled a sudden burst of melancholy at the thought of Jack, forcing himself to carry on now that I am your president. I may finally address the issues our nation faces today. Rampant inequality, political instability, growing isolationism on the world stage. It is no secret that we live in turbulent times. 
He took a breath, but together we can move past them. I believe in America with rights for all of her people, regardless of race. In America, purge of the injustice and inequality that ought to have remained in the previous century. And America taking her rightful place as a force for global good. This is my dream. I would like to make it your dream as well. I hereby pledge before the country I love so dear that I will reform this great nation of ours together as Americans. We may face anything. And so on. It seemed to have a strong impact on the press, thought Kennedy, as he left the podium. He could only hope that after Nixon's duplicity, that the people were ready to believe in the president again, just believe in a better tomorrow. Our light shall burn the pathway to the stars, my friends. I do want to show you the war here. Um, we've killed off a lot. 200,000 South Africans have died, but we've killed off a lot. Actually, Boer Republic and the Sudanese Africa are gone. Also, Africa's halfway to, almost roughly up to a capitulation, so, like, we've done very well. Like, I think we've done very, very well here, so... Cool man, just go right there, that's fine with us. And look at the Cool Man Uprising. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. The war goes on. You just go. Actually, just help capitulate these guys, that's all I care about. Just take out all the major victory points and such. Dodoma. Dodoma. Uh, also, I, I accidentally sent Marines over here. I actually made a 15 combo with. But I accidentally sent Marines instead of tanks. My bad. They still doing okay, though. So. Uh, as long as we don't encounter any, like, actual j goring soldiers, we'll do okay. Because, as you can see, they actually sent some s soldiers over here, so. Uh, operative sent for duty. I don't really care. <gasps> that's nice. That's nice, son. Uh, we can just keep recruiting stuff. That's that's literally the last thing we're going to do for the CIA, and then just forget about it, for the most part. So, yeah. Dar es salam. That'd be very nice. Just keep taking all the VPs, man. Figuring it all out, and saving Africa. The MPP didn't have, didn't ask to have this hot potato of war dropped into our laps. Our administration would much rather focus on improving American lives at home than standing strong against the Japanese. Still, that doesn't mean we won't don't have a responsibility to end this war in America's terms. They confront fascism around the world. South Africa must be defended, and the Rex Commissars of Africa must be defeated. Uh, they offer... Uh, see, uh, now, if you wonder about that, please go ahead. We will fight on. Nope. Nope. Not today. Actually, since... Oh, we're so here. Oh, we'll just do this. Because if we get in a circle and destroy the enemy soldiers, then that just literally means that, uh, well, then the South Africans can march straight on in and kill them all off, so. And circle, please. Thank you. Good. Oh, that's a tank. Hang out for now. Um, yeah, go there to there to there. There you go. Nice. Another foot in the front. One foot in front of another. With Kennedy elected, we now need to undertake a ma task that will decide the direction the administration goes towards for the next four years. With Kennedy having to appease both the party and the voters, he walks a tight line of putting uh, those he finds honorable and those he finds just as another career politician who jumped on the National Progressive Party bandwagon. With the multiple candidates vying for the top spot and only a few spots to go around, Kennedy must choose very carefully. My and stalemate. The president has a bank of TVs in the Oval Office and a cabinet next to the Resolute Desk. It wasn't for information. He has staffers and briefers by the dozens for that, but rather to feel the, um, the pulse of the nation. It, Unfortunately, though, it is not healthy. On ABC, a camera crew embedded on the Ost African frontier comes under fire from three different directions. There is yelling, a rush to the helicopter, and, of course, screams of the wounded. On CBS, yet another campus building is occupied by protesters. Draft cards flicker like votive candles in the eerily evening light as the nation's rebellious youth struggle under the pressures of the present age. On NBC, a roundtable of intellectuals and politi politicians argue over what this me war means for America and for the world. They do this night after night, appealing to expertise when all else seems to be slipping away in Washington. Watching the death and pain and anger from the relative comfort of his office chair, the president puts his head in his hands. Darn it, Nixon! Ah, the Republicans and Democrats, every darn last one of them, for putting America into the war. For throwing away all their hopes in peace. For peace. Darn them all. This has got to end. Do not let them through. Do not let them through. That's nice, guys. Do not let them through. Yeah, yes, the tanks have no match for us. No, no, no. One foot in front of another, and our moral shadow. The U.S. of A. is perhaps the greatest nation in modern history. You bet your took us. Its footprint spans from the far shores of Australia to the icy mountains of Iceland. With only challengers being the barbarous Japanese and the failing Germans, there's no doubt freedom will span the rest of the world in no time. Our failed nation faces a paradox, however. While we protect Uncle Sam on every continent, Uncle Sam himself is sickly and weak. His fingers ache with arthritis, and his stomach grumbles with the hunger of a nation subsidizing or subsidizing on little but what he can beg for as we throw our army, money, and navy off to foreign lands to fight foreign foes. We let our own people starve and grovel for scraps, no matter how much it costs to the very bones and blood of our nation. We must close this great, gaping fault in a great country, not just for America, but for the world. Goodbye. Division, goodbye. 
the iron glove. Mo one of the most important positions in the cabinet is that of Secretary of Defense, and President Kennedy certainly has not failed to deliver. When it came to candidates for the position of Secretary of Defense, few ha has had as impressive career as Henry Andrews Mucci, the liberator of the nearly 530 men who had suffered in the Bataan Death March and then imprisoned in the uh, Kabatatuan prison camp, and the recipient of two bronze stars, a purple heart, and a distinguished service cross. Furthermore, his identity as an Italian-American, the first ever appointed to cabinet, and a Roman Catholic makes him popular with both groups who have roundly praised President Kennedy's choice. Though Mucci has expressed a moderate and calm opinion on domestic matters, his stance on international fascism, especially the people who were responsible for the atrocities in the Philippines, is as stern and harsh as ever. The memories of the cruelty of those who deny the freedoms of man remains fresh in his mind, and he is not likely to forget them. Speak softly and carry a fat Fat booty stick. Yes, please. We'll do this one, too, because we get more PP out of this one. Oh, actually, can we not recruit any more? Oh, we already are. Okay. Uh, I want you guys to go over there. Yeah. Flamethrowers are very nice this time of year. Let's grab some more industry stuff, shall we? And more civvies. Yes, yes, yes. I love the civvies. He he literally head straight into there. Uh, you guys going in? Good. Good luck with that, my friends. Not bad. The civilizing influence of women. Um, well... Today, history has made as former Senator Maureen Newberger becomes the first woman to be appointed to the Cabinet of the United States. The Secretary of oh, President's new Secretary of the Treasury, Newberger, resigned her Senate seat in order to take up her new position. A veteran of Oregon state politics, along with her late husband Richard Maureen, was elected to the Senate in the 50s, her husband shortly following her to become the Senate's first husband and wife legislative team. Newberger continued to serve the following Richard's death from cancer in 1960, immensely popular in Oregon. Newberger has made a name for herself as a staunch progressive, particularly on social issues such as civil rights and health care. Although some question the decision of appointing a politician known for a focus on social issues to a largely economic position. The president picked her for the exact reason, to ensure that its administration would not prioritize profit over people, nevertheless. It's a sad reality that a woman can't get far in federal politics without being as shrewd as a fox. Behind Newberger's soft voice and warm smile lies a clever political operator, well experienced in the glad handling of Washington, making a strong asset to the inexperienced president. If you want something done in politics, ask a woman. Uh, that a woman can't get far in federal politics without being shrewd as a fox. Well, I mean, people don't guys have to be shrewd as a fox either? I'm like, there's a lot of really bad politicians. Mwanza. Um, guys, just go, to, just, just, just take it. It's, it's free real estate. It's literally just free real estate at this point. The dinosaur of the party, the Secretary of State of the U.S., bears an immense responsibility. Being in charge of the President's diplomatic choices, the De Department of State, and the appointment of the vast and diverse multitude of personalities who carry out the diplomatic actions of the nation, and with this in mind, of course, President Kennedy's choice for office, claw, dents, and pepper, represents the interests of the common man while deftly managing the immense and towering, or towering mountain of bureaucracy that the Department of State demands, being a staunch progressive and a rock against the anti-democratic movements that have rocked the U.S. and its international alliances. Pepper finding an ideological alignment with Kennedy after rising from the murk of Floridian local government to the heights of the Senate ages ago is now one of the president's most valuable allies, bringing with them years and years worth of connections, alliances, and most importantly, legitimacy. As one of the Congress's longest serving progressives, he is part of the grand plans the president now has to reform and make better the last bastion of freedom in the world. If first you don't succeed, try again. Uh, no, get, get out of here, you pieces of garbage. <laughs> you want freedom and peace? No, 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 not this time. Ah, oh, moral shadow. I think up next, let's go ahead and do in Africa. Uh, at home. Peace with honor. No, 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 no. So we can do the party above all. Uh, less liberal. We're going to go max libs. So, all right, liberals. We're going to go as hard as we possibly can across the aisle. The eternal chaos that is American politics has only been tempered by the fortunate election of the National Progressive Party to power. It still stands built on shaky foundations of corruption. Partisanship, power mongering, and war profiteering. While Kennedy has been working to finally put the chaos to rest, he's decided that to do this, he must work with the enemy. Temporarily, of course, not permanent. RFK announced his new policy of cooperating with the Republican Party, especially over their socially liberal policies as well as their progressive views on the welfare state. With the Republican Party essentially being forced to take any opportunity they can, they've grabbed Kennedy's generous hand with eagerness now. The MPP and the Republicans working hand in hand, we can finally put the death throes of the old American politics to rest. Will be seen much more liberal? It can use your Republican allies across the aisle for temporary votes. Meeting with LBJ, we get some PP too. <sighs> Nothing like getting PP with Jumbo. That, hmm. They're over there, striking a match, Henry Mucci, Secretary of State, lit his and the President's cigars. Cubans, Mr. President, gifts from Fidel himself, best in the world, the absolute best. Indeed, replied Kennedy, smiling blithely, there certainly are perks to having friends overseas, I only wish we could still get Belgian chocolate. 
The two men puffed away in comfortable silence, filling the Oval Office with slowly drifting wafts of blue smoke. With the air of a man dredging up a thought from the deepest silt of his mind, Kennedy said, You know, Henry, we've got to have some, got to make some changes here. After all, that turmoil in Africa and Guyana. The voters want us to show our teeth when the fascists come knocking. That's the wave that's washed the RDs right out of the White House. If we don't show a firm hand with the Japs, it'll wash us right back out of sea in 68. Exhaling a thin stream of smoke, Moochie tapped a cigar into the ashtray, smiling at the president with nicotine-stained teeth. Mmm, he said. Don straight, Bobby. We'll give her a heat till the spanking his daddy ought to give him. Kennedy was unable to prevent his mouth curving in amusement. Well, that we will, Henry. That we will. Time to rattle some sabers. Oh, and there goes Austin. Bye, Austin. Have a good time. Eh, well, oh, you're not going to have a good time. Oh, boy. Come on, boys. Come on. Y'all got a job. What, where is everybody? Why are you entrenched? Bro, you gotta go. You gotta go. We gotta get rid of Austin. Or Ost Africa. Cool, let's get up there first. We might actually get there before that other chopper division arrives, so. Come on. Boss shot. Operation success. Good job, guys. Good job. Return to Blumpfone time. Oh, wait, what? Oh, what the heck? I wonder about that. Please go ahead. Johannesburg. Oh, that sucks. They already capitulated once, so... Alright, so now we should have them. They should be completely capitulated. They honestly should be, right? No? God dang it. Okay, then. Unnecessary sacrifice. None have contributed more to the black Americans' suffering than the Dixiecrats of old and new. This geriatric band of white good old boys hold an iron grip on the reins of power throughout the South. Eager to defend Jim Crow under the flimsy pretense of state rights. If one wonders why supposedly free men continue to live like slaves in Alabama, Louisiana, and other, a dozen other states, look no further. Unfortunately, such cretins also comprise a sizable portion of the NPP. Since having split from the Democrats, Wallace and his cronies rail against the slightest push for civil rights from our corner of Congress. His word carries far beyond our party across party lines under millions of black minded Americans. Despite his misgivings, President Kennedy has decided to parlay with the party right in a series of publicized meetings. No doubt they will be demanding concessions in exchange for support. They will do not have the luxury of choice. Either the Civil Rights Act passes, albeit heavy, heavily reduced, or it ain't going to pass at all. Bumstadt, a meeting with LBJ. Two parties with different histories but goals alike. We find them in D.C., the capital of our very union, where a civil agreement makes civil life nice. An old alliance finds itself in new trouble. Two rivals are brought together to fight injustice. Today, Bobby went to go meet with Jumbo, the leader of the Republicans, to discuss plans for the presidency and to work out a roadmap of bills and laws the Republican Party could work together with the presidency on. They quickly got confirmed what they long had believed, that the other person was of the worst character imaginable, rude, brash, and too highly thinking about himself. The meeting was planned and arranged for by one of the Republican Party leaders, and worst of all, there were going to be more of these meetings. Oh boy, not meetings. No, no, no. When the president came to the White House, he said, well, He has some, actually, a good, uh, only a few good ideas, but what an awful man. The less I see him, the better. Despite the hard comments, the meeting was actually somewhat constructive, and they managed to work out some ideas, and a note about it was circulated in the party. We might actually be able to get some things done. But at what cost? No! Go die now. Okay, seriously, how are they not dead yet? Please tell me they're dead. We've taken literally every single major city down here. This is a mess, but I think these guys, they all they'll have it. They're, that's not too bad. Seriously. We're taking literally every single major... Do we have to get... We can't get there. Did they capitulate yet? Like, holy crap. Holy crap. They... Okay, I don't like this. Seriously. Just, just go. I don't want to deal with this. How? How is this fair? Look at how much we've taken, man. We need Gulu? I guess. Strength the pro-American sentiment, and then we'll close out of this stuff, because I don't really care about seeing this anymore. Goodbye. Oh, look. Oh, we deal with these guys. Supporting their campaigns, fill the coffers. The fall of Blumfontein, and yet the war rages on. Fill the coffers. Increase our standing with the far right by a lot. Um, support their campaigns. We're good. We'll see, we'll see what happens. My gosh, how far do you have to go to capitulate these guys? That's so stupid. Rally the progressives, though. Oh, cat herder. There may be few, but men and women of good principles still remain within the white gold edifices of Washington, D.C. These advocates of change come from many backgrounds and classes and caucus for different parties, but all believe that the U.S. is in dire need of political, social, and economic reform. For the progressive movement, no other option guarantees America's survival for both the near and far future. Currently, America's progressives rally under two factions, President Kennedy's own center party center and Senator Lyndon Johnson's Republicans. Both extremes of the MPP will raise objections over cooperating with the RDs, and Senator Johnson is infamous for both his temperament and his peculiarities. 
these. Ooh, nevertheless, bipartisanship accords legitimacy to the legislation in the eyes of the American people. A show of unity with their natural allies across the aisle can smooth the passage of progressive policies for less backlash and compromise. Just, just go, please. For the love of God, just, just do it. Just go. I don't want to wait here any longer. I really don't. These guys should be dead by now. We lit, like, an, all but, like, two VPs. That's literally it. Let's go up there. God dang it. Oh, the cat herder. President candidacy felt increasingly confident every time he faced the press in the White House briefing room. He never felt confident in public speaking, but he felt like he was getting better at addressing the nation. Even so, he'd never have jack skills. That man could talk his way out of a pair of handcuffs. Momentarily saddened, he banished all thought of his brother from his mind as the TV cameras blinked on. It would be a good look for him to tear up in front of the American people. My fellow Americans, today I speak to you not just as your president, but as your leader, helmsman of the great ship we call the U.S. of A. I come to you with a single word, unity. When our founding fathers carved this great nation out of the wilderness, their greatest strength was an unassailable unity. A spirit of togetherness and brotherhood which could carry them through any trial, no matter how grim. It took a deep breath. Time for a payload. There'd be plenty of supporters out there in TV land who wouldn't like this, but they'd have to rip the band-aid off sooner or later. It's no secret that some of the National Progressive Party do not support the policy of our administration, including the great cause of civil rights. I hereby say before God and America that in my administration, I will not let the U.S. be divided by petty factionalism in the government. I intend to work with major figures in Congress outside of the party on the issues of civil rights, particularly with the venerable senator from Texas, Lyndon Baines Johnson. Together, the National Progressive Party and the Republican Democrats can present a united front of civil rights, ensuring that a fair shake is given to the Americans who need it most. Together, we can do great things. President Kennedy felt proud of himself as he stepped from the podium. Unity. A message of just about anyone could believe in. At least, he hoped the voters saw it that way. The only thing that will redeem mankind is cooperation. We'll be seen as more liberal, get more support from unions, and as radical support base. And memorandum. Memoriam. The assassination of JFK was not just another shock to the American politics, it was also a great personal tragedy to his brother Robert. The younger Kennedy has struggled with his grief for a long time and has often even blamed himself for his elder brother's demise. Now that he's in power, he's decided that the best thing he can do is to honor John's legacy by embodying everything that he stood for. Dignity, equality, and emboldening the spirit of America. Yeah, we don't need that stuff yet. Do you? Okay, thank God. I wanted it to take that long, man. Seriously? Seriously. Yeah, that looks really bad. But, uh, that was the last one, so we should do okay with this, right? Uh, so we're gonna go there, Ikea, go there, go there. This is really bad routes we're taking, but whatever, I don't really care. There shouldn't be too many people here, right? Evo, go there, and Leopoldville, Brazzaville. Nice. Oh, nice, good job, guys. As you can tell, these helicopter divisions are not looking too good. Oh, we have actually free civilian factories already? Holy crap. Um, here, build a lot of air bases. Nothing says using government money like building just air bases in literally every single state and then some. Right? Because eventually you do run out of things to build in America. It kind of sucks. There you go. Is that good enough? Good enough for me. Hopefully it's good enough for y'all. And we always get cut down on construction too, so. Fact stamp becomes independent. Alright. Should be able to win here. I mean, your strength is real bad right now, but still. You know what? You want to do this type of crap to us? We're going to just straight up encircle you, son. Fighting, going over the river is really bad, but whatever. Go, 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 go. Go here, go here. Don't let him move, don't let him move. Come on, get in there. Nice. In memoriam. With malice towards none, our nation's always been a melting pot of multitude for peoples of all colors and creeds, and yet the idea of America as a nation for whites alone persists. It was a people's desire to put an end to this tired old sentiment that swept RFK into power. Kenfiddy, huh? If we're going to move forward as one country, we must remove the legal obstacles of the full integration of all races and a guarantee that all might be afforded the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We're likely to face stiff opposition from Southern conservatives and even from within the far-right ranks of our own party, but we must push on in the name of a fairer, more equal America. And memoriam. Memoriam, yeah. JFK was a major politician and leader of the Democratic Party's fledgling social progressive circles. Throughout his life and career, he earnestly advocated for these forward-thinking, or forward-looking ideas during his life and or his time in Congress. A champion of the growing civil rights movement in the U.S., he rallied young voters to the cause of political equality as well as a need for government that actively provides for the welfare of its citizens. Shortly after Nixon's resignation, he sent it to the presidency. Was shot weeks later. His brother. 
RFK, has now ascended to the presidency and plans to continue his father's legacy where he left off. In his various appearances before the public, he's made it clear that he will govern with the same ideals and principles espoused by his brother. A struggle for civil rights and the fate of segregation, a topic about which JFK was especially vocal, defines a large part of his campaign. Robert Kennedy was heralded, heralded the proposed Civil Rights Act as one of the cornerstones of his campaign, vowing to pass the bill during his term. Also important is Kennedy's economic policy, also largely inspired by his father, under his leadership. He claims the federal government will actively work to combat poverty through welfare programs, state grants, and other initiatives. It seems his brother's socially progressive agenda will ring true in all so actions as president. Bless him. You can kill them off if you can move here fast enough. Kindu, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, come on. You got there more than fast enough. The game cheats. I swear to God, the game cheats so hard. Can we actually just encircle these? I don't want to do... I hate... This. I don't hate this war, but just... It's so annoying, especially if Goring wins. Baratia won, wow. Alright, cool. But yeah, it's just... <sighs> Goring, you just had a win, didn't you? You fat, you fat loaf. With malice towards none? Can we march straight forward? Oh, we don't have... We can't do it just yet. In Africa. It's become abundantly clear that the RD lying and meddling has made this war more difficult to win. Victory in Africa has become a secondary to the maintenance of an endless occupation to avoid humiliation, and as a result, our administration is quite uncertain about the actual state of the war. We need to immediately begin sending officials to South Africa to get the lay of the land and determine what our real options are. Just kill them off, please. I mean, we've killed off so many here. How many more need to die? Because I want to do all that uh, civil rights stuff, like, when we're not busy fighting a stupid war like this. Come on, go, 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 go. In Africa, a fluid front, less defense, more attack. A stable front, less attack, more defense. Uh, if you want to about a stable front, please go ahead. A fluid front. According to John Lavelle, one of the Air Force's top commanders, the U.S. military's ability to strike a decisive blow against the Boers and Germans. Our industrial military capacity, fire off strips with the Reich's commissars can usually bring to bear. But using this overwhelming firepower, our force can come out a fierce offensive into the enemy territory, creating a new fluid front and opening up new opportunities for a quicker victory. There you go. Seriously, like, how many divisions they have left? We've killed off so many. 800,000 have died. Blue front, nice. They, they literally have won. Like, we killed off so many. That's where they started at home. Peace with honor. No, 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 no. Um, so, with this, with this campaign, we're definitely going to be slamming the door in front of these guys. So, put the foot in the door. In the name of Bob Partisanship. Hmm. We're finding the bill. Hand in hand. I want to do this one. We honestly should be able to do that with the Republicans. Because there are 20 Republicans here. They'll probably vote for us. And they'll have 55. So. But I do want to strengthen the Civil Rights Act and get a few, a few votes at risk of angering the far right. Yeah. I, I definitely want to do that one. I think I did this one last time too. But with this way, RFK will be seen as more liberal. So. If you want to about that, please go right ahead. But. Slam the door in their faces. Uh, the MPP cannot pass the Civil Rights Act at its current state, and the White House knows it. In fact, our opponents are hedging their bets precisely in awareness as we speak, hoping that the President's indecision feeds into a perception of weakness. For now, such as confined at the fringes of popular opinion. Rather than let it spread any further, our policy planners have crafted a daring proposal to release a draft of the Civil Rights Act so extensive as to draw the outrage and ire of everyone but the most progressive Americans. The administration could scale it back to a more palatable state of affairs afterwards, and doing so cultivate an image of compromise and level-headedness for the President himself. It's a highly risky proposition, at least for all of the President's ratings, but one that also presents high reward. Should the gambit work, then Congress will have unwittingly agreed to the version of the act we want. Um, because we definitely need... Oh, wait. Slam the door? Put the... F oh, actually, we don't need to do that one. We can do either one to get this one. Put the foot in the door, or this one. Door stands ajar. Uh, refining the bill. And then even Bob Potts incurred the Republicans' favor? I don't know which way I went. I'm gonna, you know, let's do this one. Put the foot in the door. Many within the party center consider Republicans to be our natural allies in the fight for civil rights, separated from us only by party lines drawn up, and the chaos that followed the Second World War. Indeed, they have voiced their support for the last such act in the past, and their frust with their frustrations when veto Nixon vetoed it. Should we inevitably propose another, they may well prove to be better allies in our own party right. Negotiating with Senator Johnson is crucial for guaranteeing the act's passage. Success means a stable coalition that will advance and safeguard the civil rights of all Americans for the rest of President Kennedy's term. For that alone, compromise is worth the backlash the administration may receive within the MPP. I think I did this one last time. I, I honestly can't remember. Like, it's, it's been... Like, this was one of the very first campaigns playing as RFK I did um, when I started playing, so... Like, I literally can't remember. And when I was playing as RFK, I remember 
my original time, like, there was an update coming out, so I had to rush through the last parts of the campaign, so... I, I definitely want to give this more gusto, more oomph. Look at that. That's literally the last division there that exists, pretty much. Jesus. How did the mar Marines... Good job, Marines. We should be almost done here. Victory for the DC? Dude, you, you literally have, no, like, no divisions left. Alright, so the war is pretty much over at this point. Nice. That's good. I just want to build more civvies, man. What's the next technology done? Oh, in four days. Not bad. That's good, actually. Keep going, boys. Keep going. Doing a great job. There you go. So now we can do this, too. Wow, we can't really build much more, can we? Mm, anywhere down there? Nope. How about Alaska? Nope. Alright, well. And we need the ports back, too, so we can build even more stuff, too. Hmm. Oh. Look at that. We can actually cut that stuff down too now. That's fine. Um, sadly on the Dixocrats. Yes. As always, while this sermon in the far right, Dixocrats remain headaches to work with. They did not offer the slightest bit of compromise on the issue of civil rights, instead content with wailing and screaming about their sacrosanct state's rights whenever approached. The outsiders, they are a putrid stain on the NPP. To their supporters, they are a testament to the NPP's duplicity and hypocrisy. And to the NPP itself, they are a metast... Uh, Metastizing cancer willing to throw away the party unity for selfish gain. Owing to our weak position in Congress, we won't say no choice but to seek the support in order to buttress the NPP's votes. Times have changed, however, we are now in a position to make do without theirs. For President Kennedy, now is the best time to boot these um jumped rattlesnakes and alligators out of the party for good. Or whatever it is. Or the party he leads, yeah. The door stands ajar. The time has finally come to discuss civil rights on a national level. Our new Civil Rights Act is not as comprehensive as it could be, yes, but it, oh, uh, has almost guaranteed support for the more liberal Republicans, which with which more radical legislation might not have. Plus, we can likely can count on support from the moderate Republicans if we treat them with a certain level of respect. When it comes to civil rights, we most certainly need every iota of support we can muster. With this brave bill, we can stand ready to help America live up to the dreams of a free nation where all are guaranteed life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The only real roadblock is all the so-called brilliant minds and wonderfully colorful personalities of Congress, especially from the patriots of the NPP far right. We owe it to Americans of all races, colors, and creeds. We do our darndest, hardest to get this act passed. And to create a nation where we can finally say that everyone is created equal. We've certainly got our work cut out for us, but it's worthwhile risk indeed. A moderate bill is only... Oh, well, darn it. Well, that's moderate. If that's moderate, you know what? Maybe I'll go back. Because I don't think I've gotten on this route. Because I want to go extreme. Maybe the other one... Hello. Oh, this is... Oh, that's not good. That's not good. Name bipartisanship. Um... Refining the bill, our most pressing issue. Well, you know what, we're going to keep going down this way, because we're going to die anyways in the end. But, I don't think I did this last time. I could be so wrong. <sighs> Let's get it to work. Yeah, my bad. Oh well. We'll probably play RFKs on another day. If he ever gets more content, he'll die anyways. But uh, in the name of bipartisanship, in spite of the rhetoric and barbed polite politics, we and the Republicans share common values and ambition towards America's ultimate betterment. It is perhaps only on relatively minor issues where we diverge in opinion and approach, though these differences are not so stark as to preclude hesitant tendrils of cooperation on both sides of the aisle. President Kennedy believes that reaching out to them with concessions to set issues will better incline them to work with the MPP in areas where bipartisanship has truly taken root, most notably in civil rights. Only together we can, can we bring America back to good feeling after all. And togetherness only begins when everyone has reason to join together at all. Well, that's, a, that's a long focus. South African War, don't care. Political landscape, ready for anything, so we don't need to do anything there. Good, 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 good. Nope. N nope. Obo. We gotta get Obo. Not bad. Yeah, we'll probably cut down on uh, construction spending. Conversation. Oh, if you want to build that, please go ahead. Um, If you want to build this stuff, please go ahead as well. I think I've already read this stuff before, so I could be wrong. But yeah. Oh, Cemetery? Yeah. So. It is what it is. Some stuff I don't want to read again, so. Sorry. It is what it is. And do we win? Please tell me we won. It's over. Triumph in South Africa. It's official. Africa is free. The OFN has emerged victorious in its fight against the Africa Shield, crushing the three Nazi Reichskommissariats that try to tear down a democratic South Africa apart and expand their fascist ideology all over Africa. President RFK spoke to the nation from the Oval Office to announce the victory and that America's brave boys will be returning home as soon as humanly possible. Even as the first chartered Pan Am flights touched down at airports across the eastern seaboard, crowds of thousands fell terminals and parking lots, waving flags, singing the national anthem, and achieving heartwarming 
harrowing scenes of tired soldiers hugging and kissing their young wives and children, snapped by photographs to be shared in newspapers and preserved for eternity. The Secretary of Defense has announced plans to hold a military parade in Washington, D.C. to honor the returned veterans that saved the continent from barbarity and slavery. With the defeat of the Nazis in Africa, now comes a long and tough work to rebuild a half continent for a bright and democratic future. War crime trials should be held to try to capture to try the captured assets and Wehrmacht soldiers, as well as the Boer regulars. That caused so much death and destruction. New nations will be set up to allow the people of Africa to make their own destiny and fully support them rebuilt by American money and technical expertise. And of course, millions of people, former slaves, war amputees, orphans, and hungry and sick, will have to be cared for in Africa, as well as their own troops who have seen bloody battles and gruesome deeds that few believe humans are capable of. But that is tomorrow's job. Today we celebrate the victory over Nazism and that our brave men and women are coming home. The Dark Continent no more? Nice. And you know what? With that... We're leaving Africa. Thanks for playing. Goodbye. Victory. Uh, if you want to bet this, please go right ahead. Um, I really want to do that one, but we'll keep the mandate separate. That's fine. Uh, here are the uh, photos, though. I have a picture of the people here. Lavelle. Abrams. And Westmoreland. So, it is what it is. Establishment of African-American... Or, not African-American. African mandates. Uh, if you want to bet that, please go right ahead. Oh, actually, we can play as them. Um, honestly, like... Okay, so at the time of this recording, the, the African mandates are, like, extremely bugged. You might be able to play as Angola, maybe, but... Yeah, it's... It, it's bugged as all heck. But, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to end this episode here. So, we're gonna do this one first. And I'll read about the next one next. Um, those who know best... Well, we'll probably go ahead and read about the Burning Jungle. Nah, we're gonna go ahead and do... Hand in hand? We're gonna, we're gonna do meet with civil rights leaders. The rep repudiation of walls was accompanied by a sudden influx of support from the American civil rights community. This cause and effect relationship is easy to explain after all. They had suffered more than most from the Jim Crow laws or are now diminished party rise and enthusiastically advocated. Siding with our Israel coalition meant siding with those who had made them in their forebears' lives slavery long after it was abolished. An opportunity to work closer with these advocates for freedom has presented itself in front of us. Having done away with the party's garbage, President Kennedy can now formally reach out to the colored men and women at the forefront of the civil rights movement. Co-opting their strength will be a boon like no other for the NPP, and nothing breaks the ice better than bonding over the woes of a shared enemy. But hey, uh, if you enjoyed this shortish video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow when absolutely nothing is going to be happening, nothing bad will happen for President Robert Francis Kennedy. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.